Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm going to do another flower in the uh, wildflower category. Um, and what I've decided to do today is uh, foxgloves. Now I'm going to use a different kind of paste today that uh, I haven't used before. Uh, in my research for doing uh, finding flexible flower paste, this was the recipe that I came across. Unfortunately, I found out that after using it now when it's dried, it's actually not flexible. <laughs> but if you want a cheap paste to use, then it is very cheap to make because there's only four ingredients in it: corn flour, corn syrup, um, sorry, not corn syrup, glucose syrup. Uh, water and oil it is a very soft paste but the reason why I'm using it is because in making this particular flower as you see when I'm demonstrating it you need to be able to do some blending now I tried doing it with um, flower paste and I had great difficulty in trying to blend it in the way I wanted it to be uh, and what I found with this particular paste is it's a bit like working with cold porcelain. It has a similar sort of, it's got a softer texture to cold porcelain, but it does work in the same way as cold porcelain. It's a lot easier to blend when you're working with it. So we'll get straight down onto the, to my board and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Right, first of all, the paste that I'm using is this. Now, I'm not, I've not put any colouring in this uh, in this paste to make the uh, flowers. This is the colour that it came out. Although I found with working with it over a period of time that it has tended to stiffen up a little bit. Because at first it was a bit difficult to work with because it was very sticky. But it is quite stretchy. Although this is coming apart a bit now. Um, but it is very 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 soft and also when you're doing anything like um, roses in that way you've got fine um, veining in it uh, this is a rose that I've made with it um, the veining comes out really well in actual fact sometimes it comes out even better than uh, flower paste with this you can roll it really 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 thin so, some people might have difficulty working with it, but I mean, give it a try. What I'll do is, below, I will put in the uh, the recipe for this particular paste, and then if you want to have a go at it, then have a go. Right, so I'm going to, hang on, I'll just put my light on here. So I've got more light, there we are. It's quite sunny out here, so, uh, today, and I've got to pick some... This happens when you put things down on your workbench, you get powder on it that you've been using. So I'll just give that a wipe over. Right, so I'm going to start off by rolling my paste out. Now, the cutters that I'm using are a Catalier throat cutter. And the advantage of using this paste, by the way, another thing is as well, it uh, you can you've got plenty of time to work with it because it doesn't dry out quite as quickly. It does when you've finished it; it, dry, it does dry fairly quickly, but you've got a lot more time to work with it. Now the cutters I'm using are these two cutters here, and I'm going to do three different size flowers with these. Now what you need to do first of all, just take a bit of paste off the end here, is to make um, a center for for your uh, flowers <coughs> now this one is for one that I'm doing without any without a center in it now I should have one on here somewhere I'm gonna find what I've done with it uh, now I can't see it on there I'll show it in one that I've made that I've dried <coughs> I've done the pistol because that does come far enough down in the flower. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of the smaller flowers, a smaller one than this, and then I'll make the pistol and then I'll uh, I'll show you that part. <coughs> so the to make one without the pistol in it, 
you need a small bowl of paste I'm just going to take some out of that uh, and I'm using a 26 gauge wire I'll get a couple out and then I've got some pieces ready because I've uh, run out of ones that I've got already ready made up or have I no I've got some there with a hook on it <coughs> so if you put a little hook on your on your wire so it hooks into your paste bring that down into your paste just like you do on a lot of things where you when you're doing roses and things like that roll that down onto your wire to form a, a cone shape this is just to attach your petal onto this is what it's going to hang on to so whichever way you do it whether you do it with a pistol or you do it without which is what I've done with the uh, closed ones I'll just pop that on there for now um, you do need that there to attach your petal to otherwise uh, you've got nothing to work with there you've nothing to attach it wouldn't, it wouldn't stay so where's my scissors there we are. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into four stick those in there for now just take one of those out <coughs> Now what you want here is you want some white tape. Now the easiest way to do this is probably to do it this way. There's two ways you can do it. Uh, one way is to do it all in one by starting off with a piece of your tape up past the end of your wire and then twisting it onto your wire, leaving that piece out at the top. It can be awkward for a lot of people. So another way of doing it is if we take a piece of the tape off and I've dropped it oops I swung my camera around a bit there sorry about that everybody I didn't realize that I'd swung around I keep telling people I'm my own cameraman so it's very difficult for me to work down here and watch what the what I've got on my monitor so if you start the tape off round your wire like that then pop your piece of it's sticking to my finger now I don't want to go pop that in into I'm just going to tip my camera up so you can see what I'm doing here because it's difficult for me to do this holding it out like that right don't worry if it gets a bit misshapen at this time, that doesn't matter. And then, whoops, drop the wire, I'll get another one. And I've lost my piece of uh, tape there. So I'll start again. This is what I mean about knock it, not editing out any mistakes that happen because it happens to all of us, it doesn't make any difference how, how long you've been doing it, I'm sure some of the professionals that do videos on here have things that go wrong and if they don't I would be very surprised if everything went perfectly every time but I'm sure that a lot of them edit it out so that you don't see the mistakes right that's securely on this time right we'll get the piece of tape and then pop that into there and then twist that round like that and tape down this tape's been a bit difficult to work with because it's lost its stickiness I've had it a long time the trouble is that uh, I've been used to buying it in bulk when I was teaching at college so I used to buy all everything in for the students in there so they didn't have to go out and buy it which means me carrying a lot of stock right so once you've done that you've got your wire with the flat piece of tape at the top then you want your 
nail scissors. <clears throat> Get your piece of tape and then cut down the centre of it. Right, so you've got two pieces like that. And then just gently, you need to be careful with this because you can pull it off and then it means you'll have to start all over again. Twist your tape on itself, so stretch it and twist it. This is too long, I won't need all this length, but the, the reason I'm doing it so long is because then you can cut off what you need to cut off. And you're not going to lose anything and if you break it, hopefully, you don't break too much off of it. Normally I'd swizzle it between my fingers like you do when you're taping down but uh, unfortunately doing it this way you can end up losing your tape off the end again. Right, so we've got to that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten that now to the length that I want. So we'll just cut the ends off here. There we are. Get rid of those. So you've got your two pieces there and then you can just sort of curl those out. Right, the next thing you need to do is you need another ball of paste. Now this is going to be used in the larger size cutter. So if you're just working your cutter so that it's not to the top. Hang on, just bring the camera back down again so you can see what I'm doing here so it wants to go about there like that so if you get your ball of paste onto the bottom of your wire up your wire back into your cutter again so it wants to be about there and I'm leaving a little bit of wire above it which will come apparent when I come to attach the petal to it <coughs> So it's a good idea to let that dry, but I'm going to do this while it's still soft because I didn't have one already prepared. I thought I had done one and I have. I've just seen it now, but never mind. Right, so we'll just go back onto that. I've made a dint into there, so I'm just going to roll it out again. And I'm going to cut three out, three different sizes. So I'm going to cut them all out in one go because you have got a fair time, length of time to work with with this paste. And I'm going to cut out two of the smaller ones. And the reason why that's going to make a, a smaller one is for the simple reason I have, couldn't find the smaller cutter in it. These set, these set, If you've got the set of three different sizes in it, that would come in handy. Then you don't have to do what I'm just about to do. Right, so what I'm going to do now is with the smallest, the to make the smallest one, I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to take off a slither all the way around doesn't have to be perfect and take that away lost a bit of my scallops there but that doesn't really matter because we're going to stretch that out anyway so just pop that over there and then you can take your petals off and turn them round <coughs> and pop them back on the board again I'm not going to thin the edges because we're going to stretch the paste and that's going to do all the uh, thinning that we need it to do. So we just turn those round like that, and then get your silk veining tool into the centre and roll out in a fan motion. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on with this 
paste because it being so soft you can see how thin that is I'm just going to pop that onto my pad for the time being which wants washing because it's got a lot of I've got a lot of yellow dust on it somehow so <coughs> right so do the same thing with the other ones that's the small one and the medium one right so we'll get those back and then like we've done with a lot of things I'm going to frill the edges now that's split a little bit there and the advantage with this paste is that it does stick to itself very easily so if I can overlap that there that's okay then I can go in and I can frill the edges now you need to keep taking it off your fingers because it will stick will this folding a little bit there I don't want that to fold there and go all the way around then go back to your center and start round the other side if it tears a little bit don't worry about it because nothing's perfect in nature you if you look in your garden if you have one flowers get eaten with aphids and all sorts of things and slugs and snails in my garden I've pestered with snails and forever put in uh, slug pellets down to try and get rid of them but unfortunately I can't but I can stop them eating my plants the certain flowers in the garden they love uh, for some reason certain things uh, I'm just trying to think which ones they, they, they are now I know um, mine's gone blank now I can't think of which plants, plants they are but there are certain plants that for some reason slugs really like just to repair that little bit at the top there so just got to thin the edge of this one which is going to be the small one see that's torn as well there but never mind I've noticed uh, a lot just lately in competitions and that I probably mentioned this before in videos the last time I went down to uh, Cake International in the uh, flower sections a lot of people have gone to a lot of trouble to do dyeing plants and you get a lot of this sort of tattiness on them you know they must spend ages doing it I don't know whether I'd have the patience to make something look as though it's dying because it's a lot dip more difficult than uh, making one that's alive looking alive right so the main flower so we're going to turn the petal back round again with the pointed end towards us and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in about there so the top part here is going to come on the wire and the um, uh, piece there that I put in is going to fill out the top part of the, the uh, bud so I'll get some glue down one side a little bit on that side and then I'm going to go down the centre there as well because I want it to glue onto the uh, pod that I've done there so you've just popped that onto there just move this these things from underneath here out the way and then if you get your uh, palette knife this is the easiest way of doing it and then lift that over like that and then you bring the other side up so that it just overlaps there then bring that together at the top <coughs> then if you lift it up and turn it round and put your palette knife or something that's flat underneath 
and then just go over the top just to just so sort of something you've got to work on and then blend your paste in to try and disguise that seam you've got there <coughs> then if you open it out put it upside down and then what you need to do now is to bring the frills out build them out you might have to go back while it's drying to keep adjusting this and you will have a bit of time to work on this but then what you need to do now is to dry this upside down so that uh so that, that stays in space i'll come back to that in a bit because it's still very soft at the moment so we'll go on to the next one so we need to turn this round again that as you see that's split a little bit there so i'm just going to cross that over and then just press it down and that's repaired that i know there's no veining on the outside uh but they don't really have a lot of veining on them i can't bring a put a real one in front of you to show you just how because obviously being winter time we're only a couple of weeks off christmas um there aren't any i've nothing like that in flower at all in the garden at the moment anyway so now where's my other book out oh, there yeah use that one for this so again we're going to do the same thing that's going to go with a little bit of the wire at the top there so again glue down one side bit down the other side and in the middle there put your wire in hold your wire in place and if you bring your petal up so that that comes over oops nearly it is on my knee I was pretty quick there to stop that and then the other side lift that over onto there like that then turn it round and blend that in <coughs> they do get a bit easier the smaller ones you get and then just bring that in at the top like that and put that upside down to dry then the small one if anybody's got any questions about anything please leave them in the comments below i always like to hear back from people what they think and especially if you've got any ideas about anything that you'd like to see me do i haven't had any ideas for a while so come on people give me some ideas because with the number of videos I've done, I'm running short of ideas on what to do. There are probably loads I'm, I can think about. Another way you can do it as well, if you don't want to lift it up that way, is to roll it like this. Especially on the smaller one, it's a lot easier to do this way. That's another way you can do it. Blend that round the top there. And then again, put your palette knife in and then blend... blend your paste and then put that to dry now what i didn't do with the other and i'm going to come back to that now is i want these to curl in because these are not open yet so instead of curling out curl in there are stamens in the um Fox if I was doing a competition I'd probably do them but I did try doing some before when I was making all my bits and pieces and they look quite ugly so that's why I left them out but there are stamens in they're a bit like a lily stamen but um, I couldn't get them small enough this is the smaller one so I'm going to bend this in you just have to keep an eye on these when they're drying you might have to come back and redo the, do all this so just keep coming back and having a look when they're drying but they do stiffen up in about an hour so that you can still bend them into place and they'll probably stay when you get to that point just take your time if i put it that way up you can see what i'm doing i'm probably easier doing it this way actually 
bend it in so it's not quite ready to open isn't that yet there we are like that and then put that to dry I'm just going to go back to that first one because that's all flopped down just open that up that way that's it and redo that that's this is the one that's curving out I think I might have got my paste a bit too thin I think I got a bit carried away with this one <coughs> but I have got some already made for colouring anyway so you don't have to worry about that now then the leaves I'll come on to the calyx in a bit when I've done the uh, when I've done the leaves because I'm just wanting a green out so we're going to do all all this in one go as I've said before people I only have one green paste colour in that I use which is the uh, Christmas green from Sugar Flare or if you're using Squire's Kitchen it's Holly and Ivy Holly and Ivy in the Sugar Flare is different it's too blue so don't buy that one you only need one green, it's your background, you dust it to whatever colour you want. It's a cheaper way of doing it by using your dust rather than the paste. You just need a base colour to work with. Right, so I'll start off with this with the leaves. Just re rub my fat in, there's enough on my board for me to work on there. <coughs> I just got rid of it with uh, doing the petals. Now I don't want to get this too thin because obviously you want your ridges in this and leaves are a bit more fleshy than petals. Now then I haven't got a cutter for the leaves, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the veiners for that. I'm just going to do one leaf here. I've done three different sides in leaves. Whether I use them or not is a different matter. Um, but I'm just going to do one. So if you get... <coughs> the back of your leaf... <coughs> which is that one which is the one with the dent in it so the opposite way around the leaves and then if you cut round the edge of that with your cutting wheel just very gently you don't want to squash that groove that you've just made when you cut it out it's very difficult to get right up to the side of it so you'll find that your leaf is a bit bigger than it needs to be so I'll just take that paste away and then what I'm going to do then is I always when I'm doing it this way using the vein I take a slither off the side of the leaf that I've just cut out like that take a piece off the other side and the reason I do that is so that when I put it into the vena, it actually fits in the vena. Because if you get it too big, you end up with a ridge on the outside where it's squashed out and it looks odd. So what I need to do now is I need a wire. Have I got a 28 gauge wire there somewhere? Yep, I've got one here. 28 gauge wire generally what I use for leaves unless it's a really big leaf then I might use something a bit stronger and get that to go up the center of your ridge between your finger and your first first finger and your thumb so you can feel it go up and it doesn't come out <coughs> and then onto your pad now the thing with this paste is as I said it works very similar to cold porcelain so what you have to do when you're thinning your edges is to roll rather than stretch like you would do with a with normal flower paste so you roll it round like that probably do a section because it will stick to your pad like that just to thin your edges it's 
see that also stretches your petal out as well when you do that so you have to think about these things when you're cutting them out so then we want to go into the vernier so because I've cut it out with the back of the, the vernier using the back of the vernier for the shape then put it put it into the back like that with your ridge face down on your leaf then put your top on give it a press and then we can ease that out now it will stick to it you could dust your uh, vein if you wanted to so it doesn't stick that's come away a little bit so we'll just melt that back in now that's split a bit there now because it's it is very soft as this paste so again pop that over smooth that down then if you just pop it into your vein and then just vein the bottom part again like that touch with your finger and we're done then shape your your leaf up the centre ridge like that and then put it into your onto your form to shape and then you end, you'll end up with leaves shaped like this right so once we've done that then the next thing i need to do then is to do the calyx on the uh, foxglove pet flowers i'll come on to the buds in a bit because i have got them i just want to get rid of the green out of the way and then when we've used all the cutters and things like that that's done with You don't need to keep putting fat on your board when you're doing these jobs you should have enough on you can just keep smoothing it out it depends what kind of bait paste you're using as well i mean it does vary now the cutter that i'm using is a small stephanotis cutter so if i cut out what i've got uh i've got two that i've i've got three sizes that i've got made there so i want three of these think no there's four there because i've already got one that's dry as well might as well do that one at the same time pull your paste away I do find that my cutters cut through this paste a lot easier as well I don't sometimes you find that you don't get as too clean a cut you know I mean you should do with metal cutters but with this paste I don't find, get as many tears in things right so that wants to go onto my pad not going to thin the edges on this one because they've been so small it's a bit difficult but what i am going to do is um i've got metal dresden tool here into the center and then draw a line down the center of each of these points like that keep making sure it's clean because if you pull a bit off with it being sticky it'll stick to it and it um it sticks to everything then i've pulled a little bit off there it's a fiddly job but i mean oh that one's had it won't use that one When I was doing this yesterday, doing all, getting all my bits and pieces ready, everything went very smoothly. But you can guarantee that there are going to be times where it doesn't. And my advice to you is the same as I used to do with when I worked in retailing, when cashing up wasn't going right or anything like that. Stop, go make a cup of tea and come back when you've had a bit of a rest. 
But I can't do that in the middle of making a video, can I? Well, I could, but I'm not going to. And I'm not going to say anything until I've finished this last one. There we are. That's why it's gone smoothly, so there we are. Done. Right. Next thing to do is you want your small ball tool and use the big end of it and then just press into the center just to cup it slightly because that groove that I've just done there that's going to go on the inside but it gives you sort of like a um, sharp like the back of the um, back of your petal it'll give you a ridge <coughs> so which one's which do these here that one's dry <coughs> Rather than putting the glue on there, I'm going to put the glue on the top part of the flower here. Then turn that over. And that calyx goes on like that. Turn it over and then just shape your calyx down. Now it does stand off like that. I'm going to do that on the on the softer ones but I'm only going to do it on the smaller ones because they're the ones that are still in shape the uh, first one that I did with the pistol in it is not behaving itself at the moment so I'm going to leave that one because I'm probably not I'm not going to use these in the in the uh, on the plant anyway it doesn't really matter I always have bits and pieces left over when I've done demonstrations you might ask what I do with them all. One of these days I might turn my camera around and show you the pile of flowers and things like that that I've got here. You'd probably die. One of these days I'll find something to do with them, I suppose. Then that's the smallest one. Uh, it might help if I put some glue on it. That probably would stick on there without the glue actually because it does stick to itself quite well. Right, so that's that and put that back upside down to dry. Right, you can get rid of the green now and go back to the original colour. Just get a small piece of that out. <coughs> you have to excuse me, I've had a, a chest problem. I've been quite poorly <coughs> for nearly a week and I'm I'm just getting trying to get round out round it and I thought I've got to do something. I can't be sat around all day doing nothing. So I'll get some more wires here. So I'm going to make an assortment of buds now. I've got three different kinds of buds. I've got some that are totally closed. So we'll start off with those first. Small ball of paste. And you can do these in various different sizes. Starting for a small one that's going to go at the top of the plant. Which you will see when we put it on. In actual fact I want some hooks on those don't I? Rather than doing each individual one. It's a good idea if you get all all your wires together like that and just just bend a load of them with it being 26 gauge wire it's quite easy to bend over rather than doing a load of different ones separately you've got it all done then just squeeze that in a little bit more then that can go into the ball of paste then I'm going to thin that down at the back This is where you need your dresden's tool at the side of you. What have we done with it? There it is. And I'm just going to make some marks around it. Just so it's not flat. Like that. If you can see that against my hand. 
you can do it a bit, one a bit smaller than that. The next one that I'm going to do, I'll show you this before we get on to it, is one that's starting to open like that. So you need a few of them. I've only done about three. Well, I've got about four to go on the plant, four or five, depending on where they are. So we start off with a uh, larger bowl of paste. Get your wire <coughs> into your paste. I'm just going to close that hook in a little bit more. And pull that down into your paste. Again, thin the back. When you start thinning the back, it should push your paste up a little bit more, so it'll your wire will sink a little bit deeper into it. So what I'm going to do with this, if you hold it between your finger and your thumb, and I'm going to open that centre part out, just get your dressing tool and just go over it like that. And then if you go inside with your dressing tool and then pull it up. Don't matter that there's marks in it, that adds to the effect. And then you can close it back in again a bit if you want. And then go on the outside and put some detail into this outside I've gone off camera again I'm, I, I do apologize sorry I'll go through that again so inside with your dresden tool like that to open it out and pull it up and then on the outside go around and put some detail into the outside it just stops them from looking like boring buds with you know because some buds really don't have a lot of shape in them at all and they can look a bit boring you know so i always like to add a little bit of detailing so what you want is various different sizes in that and then a few of these and then set them to dry to one side get those out of the way because they're soft and that's all your different components for your foxglove so we'll get rid of that paste out of the way now those we're not going to put a calyx on because we're going to do most of the detailing on that with the dusting so I'm going to keep my camera this way then you can see more of what I'm doing because I do work more to this end of the board anyway which you can see I usually like to use a double width because sometimes the pa the powder can come through your um, kitchen roll and you don't want to get it on your board if you can avoid it so I'll just get that out of the way so the colours that I'm going to use for colouring are Ginkgo Rich Burgundy uh, should have a dark green here somewhere, where have I put it? I did have them all together, or so I thought, as it dropped down the back. No, it's not it. I should have some... Oh, rainforest, there it is. I'm going to use the those two colours together on the... Um, on the leaves. And then I'm using tropical lime for dusting on the uh, the buds. So you needed an assortment of brushes of different sizes for this. I'm going to, I'm good, being really clever here, getting them all my brushes out all in one go. Flipping it, give me a soft a pat on the hand and a wide one. Back to probably don't need that. And then I want a red one for the rich burgundy. So I'm going to start with the uh, with the flowers. <coughs> Which is my dry one. That's a dry one. 
Right, so we've got a closed in one there. We've got an open one there. And there should be a smaller one somewhere. I think. No, there isn't. I've dusted them all. The dusting's the same anyway, so I don't need to do all of them. So a bit of powder onto your onto your uh, kitchen roll and start from the side and dust down in inwards inside the uh, flower now leave the center part there doesn't get any color on it there's a lot of a paler color I've studied the flowers on my computer online you can do this as well if you put in pictures of whatever flower it is you're doing uh, the ones, the one that I've been using is one called Shutterstock and you get photographers that upload pictures of practically everything so anything that you're researching you can find on there brush down, not right down to the bottom but part way down like that and then I'm going to come to the outside and then I'm going to go this isn't you might be saying well don't look like a wild one because the wild ones are all pink but there's loads of different colours in foxgloves and I just want it to be a bit different because I had one in my garden that was like this which was a creamy coloured one with the pink like this in it and I thought it was rather nice like everything else there's lots of different hybrids so that's that one done and then with the ones that are closed in it's mostly dusting on the outside with these because that's the only part you're really going to see you can dust some colour on the inside if you want to if you're very careful and you've been patient and you've got the time to play around with it doing a video you'd be here for hours if I started doing that that calyx has started stiffening up a little bit there that's been quick hasn't it because I've only just put that on and considering, considering we're well into December now, it's pretty cold out there because where we are now, we've had a lot of snow. I'm just going to go over the edge with it just to give it a little bit more there, just to uh, please the fanatics that want to get all the detail in. <laughs> I'm only joking. Right, so once you've done that, the next step you can do then is to <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> put your dots in. I'm just going to suck them in to stop myself from coughing when I suck something. So I apologise for talking with a mouthful. So what you don't want now is a cocktail stick, which I should have knocking about here somewhere. There it is. So what I'm going to do is to knock a bit of the colour into the lid. I always use the lid as a palette for the simple reason that I hate waste. And if you use the lid, when you finish colouring with it, and I've probably mentioned this in all my videos, so the reason I mention it is for anybody that's not watched my videos before, is that um, if you leave it to dry out next time you want to paint with it you just add some more isopropyl or vodka or whatever else it is that you're using and you can reconstitute it and carry on with it you don't waste anything at all just let it dry before you put your lid back on oh there it is I keep some isopropyl in a, one of these shot tubes never drunk a shot out of them but it comes in handy for sugar craft. So I'm just going to mix that in with the powder. Need a bit more in that. I used to do use a hyper, hyper um, uh, for uh, injections 
well, they, whatever they call it, I've forgotten name for it. But they're difficult to get hold of nowadays because they think you're on drugs if you ask for one of them. So I have to be very careful. And I use that to do the dots. Because I can get really fine dots. If I do it with a brush, I just sort of end up with splodges. So I'm not very neat at painting. Just take your time. You can go over into your colour if you want. Add a bit over. Because it's like most flowers. There's lots of, lots of different variations. And two, one flower will be totally different to another one. They're not all exactly the same. There we are. So that's the inside of that done. And then what I need to do then is uh, go on to my darker colours. And I'm going to use some uh, ginkgo with the small brush to dust the calyx. I've got some on my flower there, should be very careful. Don't get too much on your brush otherwise you do what I've just done. And if you're doing a competition be very careful about that because they'll find a speck anywhere. They did with me, I got marked down for that. On something that I would have got much higher marks for. If only I had to be more careful. Right, I'm going to have to be careful on this one because this one hasn't dried properly yet. I'm just going to put some of this on there. So. There we are, so that's both of those done. So one partly open, one fully open. Have I got any more on there that need doing? No. Oh. Right. Put that end back on there. And we'll just get those out of the way for the time being. that over there to dry so I'll come on to the uh, buds now now the small small bud that's the one that's dry so what you need to do now with this is uh, dust on this one with the um, tropical lime they are green but they're not as dark as the uh, the leaves and things like that so I'll get some of that out I use this a lot for the base of petals where there's that little bit of green because sometimes if you do it too dark a green even though it is on the flower it can look too much so I'm just going to start from the top of the bud bringing it down to the bottom like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to catch just the very edge with a little bit of the ready colour. I'll put that with those buds up there. Where are they? There. <coughs> and this is the one that is starting to open. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> so, oh, wrong brush. Oh, put my red brush in it getting carried away there have to move watch this I'm just going to brush the top part there this has started changing color as it's opening 
and then with the red just catch the edges there probably got a bit too carried away with that but never mind and that goes in with them right now then the leaves I'm just going to get rid of that brush out of the way because I don't need that now I'll pop that colour over there and put the lid back on there keep your pot, pots because if you knock them over it's a nightmare to clean up his uh, dusting powder so if you get as much of your colour off as you can if you don't have a lot of brushes if you're just starting out and you've only got a couple of brushes you can clean your brushes by getting some corn flour on your worktop and then work your brush in and it brings the colour out and then you can use it for a different colour I've got loads of brushes so I've got different brushes for different colours but not everybody has that luxury so if you haven't and you've got minimal amount of brushes then clean them in between each of the colours but I always keep one brush just for greens I use it for all the different kinds of greens but I don't use any other colour with it and you do need a clean brush if you're using anything like white or cream or any of the pale colours so I've got a dried leaf here so what I'm going to do with that first of all is I'm going to dust all over with the ginkgo And then turn it over without putting any more colour on your brush just waft over the back because the backs are always lighter than the front side of the leaf it just basically lifts out your the colour of your veins really that's where it catches more than anything on there and then we'll get rid of that and then we go on to the rainforest which is a much darker green So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to dust that down the centre here and you can pull it out a little bit but don't go right to the edge it just gives your leaves a little bit more depth because although they're quite plain green and quite dark on foxgloves when you're making them in sugar if you don't give some detail into it they just don't look realistic so it helps to do a little bit of shading like that even though in reality they haven't sometimes we have to use artistic license in sugar craft when you're doing anything like this to make it look realistic and some people on some of the uh, fantastic flowers that i've seen on facebook in the groups that i'm in there's some very talented people on there but they must spend hours and hours and hours on on the flowers you know but i mean it realistically if you're doing them for a customer for a cake like i would um You've got to do things quickly so you've got to find a way around getting the sim similar sort of effect without spending quite as much time on it because time is money and the more time you spend on it then the more money you've got to charge for it right so then what i'm going to do then is i'm going to gloss the leaves with some leaf glaze like that And you can see that it pulls the darker colour into the veins and makes the veins stand out more. And this is the sort of effect that I was aiming for to make it look more realistic. Not on the back because the backs are always plain like that. The, any shine that you get. And they are quite shinier foxglove leaves. I might put a little bit more glaze on there. Just to make that a little bit more shiny. Because it does dull down a little bit as it dries. Right, so we can put that to one side to dry. <coughs> <coughs> Make sure <coughs> you clean your brush <coughs> after you've finished. Because if you don't, you can end up with sift brushes and then you can't get them back as they were. So I always keep some isopropyl in a separate container just for cleaning brushes out in. Gets a bit manky in time, as you can see, but it still cleans your brushes out because when you're 
the, um, using your varnish like that you are picking some of the colour up in your brush on there as well so it will get a bit uh, manky but every now and again you can change it but you don't have to throw it away every time you do it you can do it quite a lot before you need to throw it away pop that away Let's get rid of that brush so then we can get on to assembling the flower together now <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a full 20 gauge wire for this it's surprising how much room up you take with all these components on here you could use a slightly thicker wire if you find that better oops sorry just caught me wire on the camera so for that we want some dark green tape now i've got some half with dark green tape but later on further down i'm going to start using full with green tape but to start off with the top i'm going to start off with uh half width For anybody that's watching for the first time, the reason the, how I cut it in half, I don't use a pair of scissors and spend ages going down it. I have my special little gadget, which those that have been watching me for quite some time will know. I have my trusty little uh, cutter here, which is a gem product. If you've got anybody that sells gem near you, go get yourself one of these from your sugar craft shop. Uh, it comes with three blades in it. I take two of the blades out. It all comes apart And they're just normal razor blades in it, which are very cheap to replace and when they get stuck up and They're not cutting anymore. Just uh, turn your blade round and Then when that gets bunged up turn the blade over and you've got another two sides right so I Started my tape off there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all my bits and pieces ready to put the flower together those are my smallest buds there then I've got some larger buds then the buds are starting to open I'll just put those there for now for, for the time being <coughs> because you start getting too many things out you can damage things and it can get very crowded so I'm going to start off with the smallest bud right at the very top and tape that in <coughs> pull your wire down so it's right down to the tape tape it down a little bit then you put another one these are fairly close together at this point the sort of bunch around together let's, let's see what size we've got uh, that's not too bad put that one in so obviously the buds will increase in size this is why you need to do a few different sizes so you can, and we'll just make sure we pull all those wires in so they're nice and tight keep everything really tight make sure that you stretch with one hand and you twist with the other there's one wire there that will pull down a bit more there it is got you then put another one in there If you find that you're catching them with your fingers, if you just leave a bit of wire showing and then you can pull it down when you've taped down with it. You just need to find out which wire it is. There we are, that's the one. Just talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. <laughs> I have to joke around, don't I? 
the only thing that I get from my dad is my sense of humour which is a bit dry and some people find it a bit difficult to understand so if you don't understand my sense of humour I do apologise get all these buds in I mean on some of the flowers when they're open you get a lot of flowers at the bottom I haven't done as many for the bottom because it just gets too much especially if you're doing it for a cake you know and you've also you've got to think about time as well if you're charging for it Give these wires all a pull just to make sure they're all nice and tight. <coughs> I'm just going to tape, tape down a bit now to hold these in place. This will stop these from moving around now. There we are. Then I can come back up again and start my tape off again underneath there ready to put the next lot in because I'm ready to put in the uh, starting to open buds now you do get the odd leaf in between as well and they are quite small so what I'm going to do is some of the smaller leaves that I've got I'm going to put an odd one in now just here and there, you don't want loads in. Most of the leaves are down at the bottom, below the flowers. But it just make it, makes it look a bit more realistic if I do add the odd one in. Pull that bud in, make sure that's nice and tight. Yeah. Finding out which wine is which, you've just got to keep trying them all just to make sure that they're all nice and tight in. Just watch your tape to make sure it doesn't get screwed up because when you're stretching it sometimes it does have a habit of curling on itself. <clears throat> I'm just going to put another small leaf in there. I don't want them to be too obvious because they are sort of slightly insignificant at the at this stage in the flower. Go a bit further up and put another bud in there. That's the last one of those, I think. Let me just have a check on that. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's still a soft one, is that? So again, I'm going to tape down again now to make sure they stay put. Some people might say, oh, well, it's a waste of tape and all that. No, it's not a waste of tape. You have a hell of a lot of tape on a roll. It goes a hell of a long way and it's better to be safe than sorry. Right, so we've got those at that stage now. <clears throat> they will come out, will those, but I'm leaving them all upright for the time being until I've taped everything in. Just in case you're wondering. There's always a reason behind my madness. So then we start with the smaller flowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get 
all my flowers over here. Oops, I haven't dusted some. Those are small, that's a medium, that's a medium, that's a large, that's a large one, that's a medium, oops, That's a large, <coughs> that's a large, and that's a medium. <coughs> so, we can start putting the small ones in here. I'll just have to dust these afterwards when I get the whole thing in together. Now I'm just going to bend them out a little bit because I don't want to damage the... Uh, the calyx on them and that's just come off as my tape pull that in tight bend that out a little bit pop that in there <coughs> Keep pulling them down just to make sure you've got them in really securely tight. No, there's a bit. No, it is. It's in. And another one. Have to make bend that one out a little bit more to go in there. You can move them around once you've got everything in together. Just the main thing at the moment is to get them all taped in. Right, onto the medium ones. I'm going to tape down a bit here because they're moving around a bit of these and I'll come back in and put, start the tape off again. If you've got quite a fleshy stem on, on foxglove so you can get away with doing that. That's well in. Let's try that one. Yeah, that's right down. That's right down. Tape those in so they don't move. <coughs> There we are, go back up again.
get hold of that wire and pull that in make sure that's nice and tight it's always a good idea to tape down a bit because once you've covered your, your uh, stem with tape and you're putting another flower in it helps them to grip as well that's another reason for taping down in between especially if you're doing big flowers I'm going to get some more tape because I've run out there of tape so if, oh no that's light green don't want light green want me dark green there it is <coughs> so I can demonstrate now <laughs> for those that haven't watched me, me use my little handy device here so we open it up your tape goes in through that end feed it through don't get hold of it until you get, it comes through to the end because you don't otherwise you don't cut your fingers on the um, on the blades pull down on your blades like that and that should have cut through there but this is getting a bit blunt so it might not have uh, cut it all the way down we'll see yeah I think I need to change my blades over so after this demonstration that'll be a another job to do actually I'll leave that because I can get onto it full with tape when I get onto the full flowers further down which is not a bad thing always nip it in with your fingernail to make sure that it's attached now that wire showing there so I need to find out which wire that is that's that one there we are got ya and the last of the sm smaller ones or medium ones I should say just bend that up a bit more so I don't catch it on my finger just be careful with things like your calyx and that when you're turning that you this is why if you leave a bit of wire and then pull it down later it stops things from getting damaged because if you catch it on your fingers and knock a piece off especially if you're doing it for somebody it can be very down heart, heartening to find that you've done all that and work only to have to take it all apart again to start again just undo that so I can get hold of the wire <coughs> I think it's that wire there no it isn't it must be that wire then No, there's another wire there. That one must have been a shorter one. Now, got to be one of these wires. There it is. Got it. Got you. See why it's important to tape down? Because if you tape down, then you cover all your wires up. You can you can then see which wire it is that you need to pull. I think I've got my tape the wrong way around there. Yeah, I have. Wrong side. There's one side that is stickier than the other, so just check that. If you just squeeze it between your fingers and see which side sticks to your finger, you'll soon find out which is the right way. That's torn it. <laughs> it's my Yorkshireman's sense of humour. So now we can add in the larger flowers now. So when you put them in, make sure that you get the spotted part of the flower downwards. So you can see that. I'm going to tape down in between each of these flowers because this is when they can start moving around and these are heavier as well although this paste is quite lightweight you do get, still get quite a lot of weight in your flowers when you get them together because you've got the weight of your wires and everything in there I 
just up me tape up so it's got a bit twisted together there it's getting darker outside so and I've got my watch on so I don't know what time it is Just take your time, you can't speed this sort of thing up You've, because if you do that's when you start making mistakes even for a professional they've still got to take the time they might seem to whiz through it but a lot of people have a habit of speeding the videos up and I don't like that I like to think, see things done in real time because that's how you would do it I do sometimes stop tapes if I've got to, when I'm making things, when I have a lot of petals to add or whatever, you know, but uh, I start off adding the petals and then come back to the, to the last few petals so that you can see how it's done. But it can get a bit boring just putting loads on, although we don't have that problem with this, it's just that there's a lot of flowers on here. And that's the only problem we've got with this one. I'll just show you something here. I've missed a bit of tape there. There's a little bit of the light green from the uh, where I've put the flower together there. So I'm just going to... I've got to the bit where my tape's got wider anyway. So this is probably better here. So I'm just going to cover that bit up again. Being the perfectionist that I am. There we are. Done. and then put the last flower in nice and tight in I'm going to start with some fresh full width tape here because that's uh, splitting where I tried to cut it where's me there it is Like I said before, if you stretch your tape like that, see that's sticking to my thumb a bit there, so that's the sticky side. That wants to go on the inside, so you go around with that, nip that in, and then twist it on. So if we get all the leaves in first, and then we can adjust all the flowers, just get rid of that tape out of the way just going to move that paste now that's dried off that what I've been doing this so now that lid can go on there and that's ready to be used again so if I get all my leaves over I probably won't use all these because I've made loads of them but on, a, on the bottom of the stem of foxgloves you do get a hell of a lot of leaves and I've got some larger ones here as well 
So I've got three different sizes there. Whoops. Get myself comfy. <coughs> and start off with the small ones. I'm going to put put them in in pairs. You have to remember when you're doing anything like this as well. It's going to be top heavy up here, so just be careful when you're doing anything like this. Same with doing things like gladiolide. That's another flower that I'm going to do eventually, not just yet, but I am going to do that. Um, I did that. Uh, last time I entered at Cake International I did Gladioli because I'd never seen anybody else do them in sugar before so I thought everybody else does roses and lilies and orchids and things like that and I thought what can I do that nobody else is doing they've probably done them since but uh, at the time they weren't now, when I, when I put, while I put these leaves in, I can adjust them once I've got them in. Where, how I want them to sit. Make sure they're all in nice and tight. I'm going to have to go off camera because I'm going to have to hold this down to do this. So it's upside down. So I want to take these leaves in before I put anything else in to make sure that they're nice and tight. I'll take my tape off there. And then we can have a look at these leaves here. Yeah, that looks all right. I'm just going to push them up a little bit so they stay put for now. I can come back and move them around once I've got all my leaves in. I probably could use a, a stronger wire because the wire is feeling as though it's not strong enough when you get down to this point. So if you want to use a stronger wire for your main wire to put all this on, you can do. <coughs> Right, one of those in. And another one in at the same point. Sometimes it's just as well to sort of wrap it round like this rather than twisting it just to get it so you get your wire in then you can tighten it up then get it downwards and spin it whoops broken off this is the awkward bit when you get to this because you do have a lot of weight to deal with when you're doing anything like it's like doing a big spray of flowers i once did a a wedding cake with uh, a very long spray of flowers that a pointed spray that came down over two tiers from the top of the cake and the spray was actually 16 inches long and this is what i had to do <laughs> i had to hold it upside down to spin it Just pull those wires down and make sure that those are in tight.
what I'm going to do is I'll put these uh, leaves in later on. Anybody who goes onto the Facebook pages that I'm on that have seen this will see the full spray when I've finished it. But I'm going to have to do a lot of things off camera to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it out and show you the spray, the flower stem as it is. It will have more leaves in later on. So just bring all those down like that. You're not bringing them down, you're bringing them out sort of more, more or less to fill it out. Those leaves there can come out a little bit as well. And as you get to the top then they stay a little bit more upright. So there we are, that's my foxglove. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you're inspired to have a go at doing it yourself as well. Just bring that up so you can down so you can see that a bit better. <coughs> Uh, I enjoy doing these videos so I'd love to hear from people if there's anything that you'd like to see me do or any questions that you've got to ask about anything. I know I'm repeating myself but I would like to hear from you. Um, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well and uh, give me a like on anything that uh, that you like. We always like to see those as well. Uh, subscribing is free so uh, don't be afraid of doing that and look forward to seeing you in the next video so take care stay safe and see you soon i'm also going to upload a video of my christmas decorations as well uh, after i've done this one as well as my christmas card to you all from me to you so take care stay safe see you soon